for the time, tea time, yeah, this is tea time, yeah, making a difference, one cup at a time, tea time, so be sure to grab your tea, grab a seat, and tune in to Miss Liz, tea time, tea time, making a difference, one cup at a time, tea time, yeah, in the house and we're going to be doing some updates and some good strong cup of tea tonight is tenacity tenacity i think ten tenaciously tenaciously i think it's, it is uh exposing and accuracies uh atroc atrocities jesus murphy miss liz why are you can you even talk tonight uh what are you drinking miss liz <laughs> Uh, so before we get started, guys, we're going to get the disclaimer out there. We're going to get a bio, but before all of that, we're going to get you over to Miss Liz's YouTube channel, ring that little doorbell, and then you can watch these times at any time in your home, in your car, at an event, all of that good stuff, morning, night, or evening, whenever you feel like listening to tea time, turn it on. So what does Miss Liz offer you? Well, I offer you over 300 different interviews from all walks of life, all different times, kinds of topics and things to enjoy. And of course, a lot of different types of teas. So you'll get a TEA from all of my guests from season one, two, three, and four, and five. So uh, let's get the disclaimer going and then let me get the bio. And then we're going to get Pepper in here and we're going to spill some tea together. And Miss Liz is going to try and get her tongue to untwist itself and we're going to have some good time tonight. So disclaimer for Miss Liz's Tea Time Live Show. Miss Liz, myself, is going live using StreamYard. Before leaving a comment, please, green, please grant StreamYard permission to see your name at StreamYard.com. Please be advised that the content for, brought forward for any Tea Time show hosted by myself, Miss Liz, is always brought forward in good faith. However, may bring forth dialogues and opinions that are not representative of my platform. The facts and information are perceived to be accurate at the given time of airing. All Tea Time guests and audience participants are responsible for using their good judgment and taking any action that may relate to the discussion. The content brought forward may include discussions for some where they may be emotionally at risk. Significant to know that the show is engaging in discussion forums only to offer and inspire awareness and connection and is not providing therapeutical advice. If you have any questions about the disclaimer or the panelist discussion, you may freely contact me, Miss Liz, through my email at bookingmissliz at gmail.com. Moving forward, should you choose to voluntarily participate in tonight's show in any aspect, I myself, Miss Liz, welcomes you. And should you decide that this show is not made for you at this time, I respect those wishes and we'll see you at a later show at a later date and time. And again, all regular tea times are done on Thursday, 3 p.m. and 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. If it's a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, it's a rescheduled tea time, surprise tea time, or a special tea time. Miss Liz just does tea all the time. So now a little bit about Pepper. Well, who's Pepper Ann? Well, you can see she's that cute little cartoon character there, but you're going to see Pepper Ann in just a few seconds. Pepper Ann is a seven-generation Texan where she and her family currently reside. She has dignantly worked with private investigators, which helped flush her narrative with detailed excellence in her true crime book. She has protected her identity because there are people not too happy that she published her first book, warning her to stop and hacking her computer, but she refused to give up. Her life and her family lives were even put in jeopardy. This only puts more resolve into her to continue writing the truth of what happened. Pepper's goal is to bring the real story behind the stories where all her where it's all heard about. She is making sure that we all hear all sides of the story so that we make her make our own decisions of right and wrong and justice. While her ultimate focus is and always will be true crimes, some stories are too hidden to bring to light which is why Pepper decided to also dabble in writing crime fictions where she, the stories are inspired by real crimes. Let me get Pepper in here and let's spill some tea and Miss Liz, sip of her tea. Welcome, Pepper. Hi, thank you so much for having me. I'm so happy to be back. 
I was like, oh my God, did we lose the sound? Like, you know, we were just in the back having some fun and we were talking a little bit and getting away with time. And then we were like, oh my goodness, we got to get online. Like, we got to do this. <laughs> so Pepper, <laughs> Pepper, you were on last last year for, uh, for your book. Mm -hmm. And we were talking in the background about book two, but we won't talk about book two just yet. We'll talk about book one. For the people who haven't seen uh, your first time on Tea Time, share a little bit about that. But before we get into that, Pepper, I'm going to take you way back a little bit. So who, were, who was Pepper as a little girl and who's Pepper now? Oh, Pepper as a little girl, she was always getting into trouble, always digging around, looking for, looking for adventures and fun things to do, uh, always reading, grabbing books trying to read and learn stories along the way and uh as she got older she realized that uh life is full of adventures and that's what it's about you got to live life to the fullest and and that's what i love about you because the last time pepper was on after the live show we talked i think until two in the morning i think it was <laughs> we yeah. talked for a long time after oh, yeah. And, yeah and we were we like gotta we gotta go we gotta go we gotta go to bed <laughs> We had a lot more to say. Yeah. And <laughs> don't ever leave anything <laughs> unsaid. <laughs> and that's just how it works on tea time, right? You never know how long you're stuck with Miss Liz. <laughs> oh, but you know what? It was so much fun. It was one of the best moments I've had in a long, long time. So no, it was it was so worth it. It was yeah. a blast. <laughs> <laughs> so Pepper, do you want to share a little bit about book one? Okay, let's see. First, first off, book one is about uh, a family member who uh, I learned a little bit of a history of, of the individual about. He's a well-known criminal here in the state of Texas. He was a cattle wrestler, escaped jail twice, uh, had been tagged as a notorious um, criminal on the run, and uh, he was involved in a shootout, an eight-hour shootout against law enforcement. So uh, the story made news, headline news back in, uh, you know, 2000, 2001. And uh, I started digging and actually one of the one of the main things that caught my interest was there was a, uh, a large uh, crime rate in the state of Texas. This individual he was uh, caught up with and uh, they were set free and he's the only one that uh, fell for those crimes. And uh, the more I dug, the more I realized those individuals were still at play. So I wanted to expose it, and that's what I did. I wrote a book that uh, his, in in a nutshell, it's made a lot of people mad because they didn't want their names out there. But yeah. So Pepper, what has changed since you last been on on uh, Tea Time? Well. The book was uh, published in August of 2022, and I've attended a lot of events. I've gone to uh, book signings. I've uh, done public speaking at uh, universities and libraries. And every time I attend an event, I'm either contacted by some of those individuals I exposed, or they just randomly show up at the event. Oh. make an appearance to let me know that they're there. Um, I've been contacted by them. They're wanting to get me off by myself to talk to me about the book. Uh, of course, I'm not going to do it. Why would I? <laughs> why would I want to? Why would I want to talk to them alone? I've had uh, I've had a lot of them reach out to me. And, so, Patty, uh, uh, Pepper, do you feel like? scared when they show up at the events? I'm not scared. I have usually have uh, family or friends with me. They go to the events. And I'm in a different frame of mind when they're with me. Because, you know, you're, you, it's instinct. You become protective of your loved ones. Um, if I'm by myself, it's different. But when I have my loved ones around me, there's a little fear. Yeah, um, it's a fear of wanting to get my loved ones to safety. Um, it was an event where one of the individuals showed up and she was taking pictures 
my mom and I were at the event. She was taking pictures. She came up, randomly spoke to us. We were staying overnight in a hotel, my mom and I were, and we were going to return back to the event the next morning. And um, I caught a man in the lobby of the hotel and he was with him and he was tailing us and he was he was watching everything we were doing. I believe the gal that took the picture showed it to him so he could identify us. We got downstairs the next morning. I think it was probably about 6.30 or 7 in the morning. I tell my mom, we need to go home. We got downstairs. I wish that uh, I had taken a picture of the fellow's face because this was classic. The look on his face, he was sitting in the lobby where everybody else was getting coffee. And he took a drink of his coffee and he looked up at me and he saw me looking at him. And I was just staring at him, just looking at him. And he looked so shocked. And he tried to put his head down where I wouldn't recognize him, but I, I could identify him today. So could my mom. Wow. And he was trying to be discreet. There was nothing discreet about him. That's just one instance, you know. Um, they're not bold, they're stupid. They're just <laughs> stupid. And, you know, that's how I was able to expose these people <laughs> in the book. <laughs> well, it, and that's what we said in the background, right, when we were talking before we went live, was, you know, like, they're so smart that they're so stupid. <laughs> yeah, 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 you're right, you're right. I do want to say this, they are still reaching out to Bob and all the correspondence and things that they do with him. Uh, Cause you know, he's my cousin. He's the one the story, the book is about. I have it. I have all the proof yeah. <laughs> of everything. They don't realize what they're doing is uh, that, you know, they're just providing proof of what they're doing. And it's- wrong. Well, exactly, right? Because they're just increasing in, you know, exposure, right? Yeah, yeah, you're absolutely they're giving, right. They're giving you more juicy details for the next book. <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah, that next book won't happen until we have a fair investigation and then I don't have a problem exposing it all. <laughs> it's, uh, you know, it's a shame. Um, I, think, I think the problem is they've never had to answer for their crimes. They've never had to, they've never been held accountable for what they've done. And they're going to keep doing it until they are. Yeah. So when you were on tea time the last time, Pepper, you, uh -huh. you said you were going to see Bob at the jail, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Are you still going to see Bob? Well, no. So um, let's see. Actually, what I did was I had my, uh, my name taken off of his visiting list. I was okay. visiting him up until the book came out. And then I had my name removed from his visiting list because I told him. I want you to remove these individuals and he didn't do it. So I thought, okay, I don't want them tied up with our family. So I removed my name. It almost doesn't matter because they're still, they're, they're still bleeding in over here to us. Uh, but I am still in contact with Bob. Uh, don't, don't visit him yet. I may go back to see him. Um, I can, if I want to have, if, if I want, to put my name back on his list, I can. You, there are steps you have to take. Yeah. Um, you know, with with anything, but uh, yeah, it's been probably two years, I think, since I've seen him uh, in person. Oh. Yeah. So the last time you've seen him was just before you came on tea time, then. Uh, yes. Uh huh. Yeah. 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 I still correspond so, with him, but I don't. Uh, like I said, I we haven't I haven't seen him. So are you talking on phones now or? Uh, we correspond through, uh, through, through uh, email. There's a uh, service that's set up through uh, TDC, Texas Department of Corrections. Um, and we're able to correspond that way. So yeah, uh, of course everything's monitored through the prison system, but uh, yeah, but we, but we do correspond uh, that way. So Pepper, do you want to share a little bit about book two or do you want to wait until it actually comes out? I don't mind sharing a little bit about it. The only thing I cannot tell you is the release date. 
<laughs> like we said in the back, it's taking its time. I don't really know the definition of soon. I always assume soon meant weeks or months, two months, but apparently my soon is it's 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 a lot longer than soon, but <laughs> um it's it's actually it's a it's a fiction series, but it's um based off of so I it's I, I got the idea it's inspired by actual events, actual crimes. And since I've never written fiction before, but it is inspired by um, actual events, my editor is helping me with it. So it's a, it's a crime series. It's called uh, Penny Pearl Mysteries, but there's also humor in it. So I have a couple of different things that I'm writing. Um, in the mix, and so my editor is helping me to make sure that it, it all fits just just so. Uh, the first book in the series was supposed to be released this summer, but it's not. <laughs> well, it's summer's not, not over yet. We're just going into fall, so you might be able to pull it off. I, you know what? I don't think I'm going to be able to have it. <laughs> my, my editor, John, he says, no, this can't go. And I listen. I listen. You know, he's one of those. If he says yes or no, I, I do whatever he says. So, yeah, we're still back and forth right now with that. Yeah. So, Pepper, you were talking to me. I don't know if we were talking on TikTok about it, but you were talking about the crime con. Is it like the uh, like the the Comic Con that you went to, or that you're taking a part of? Well, okay, so there was actually it was a true crime mini con event at the okay. Dallas Public Library. Yeah, um, I was actually invited as one of the guest authors to attend, and I believe it was it was June June fifteenth. I believe that's when it was, um, and I was invited to go, and uh, I was actually on an author panel with other wonderful uh, authors and uh, believe there was a, a young lady who hosts a crime, true crime podcast and it was so much fun yeah i had a lot of fun and um, of course i had a you know little mini book signing and i got to meet people and uh, they were so wonderful with me at the dallas public library they were amazing yeah yeah, I remember I remember us having a conversation about something like a comic com and I was just like, I remember her saying something or did I dream that? I don't know. Sometimes we talk for so long, sometimes I'm just like, is it really did it really happen or did I dream it? Did I dream about Pepper and her crimes? <laughs> <laughs> no no it did it really happened it really happened you know what and actually i do want to share this before um i went to the event i was contacted by one of the individuals who lives in the area that i exposed and they wanted to know if they could meet and speak with me off to the side not at the library event but somewhere outside isn't that crazy isn't that, that is crazy <laughs> so yeah yeah but yeah, you didn't dream that. You didn't dream it. It, it, it was all real. <laughs> and we talked the last time when you were on Tea Time. Are you looking at making this into a movie? Well, I haven't been contacted by anyone. If someone is interested in it, then I might. Uh, I think, you know what? Actually, right now, it's still, it, it seems to really be taking off. A lot of people are really starting to uh, learn about the book. And I'm receiving more and more uh, reviews and emails from people asking me questions about it. You know, uh, they're very interested in it. But as far as a movie or anything, nothing has been said. Or, or would, you no like one... it, would you like to turn it into a movie? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know what? I, I did it first. Um, possibly if it's done in a respectful manner, um, you know, because I, I became close to a lot of the victims, the individuals who uh, had, uh, some of them were traumatized by some of the crimes that were committed. And so I, I've had people tell me when they read the book that it needs to be turned into a movie. I wouldn't be against it, but course i would i would have a lot of questions like anybody would but yeah i don't know well and, and it's dear to your too because it's family right like this is part of your history 
Yeah, it is. It is. Yeah. You know, and, and the whole point of me writing this story was because I wanted to get the truth out there. I wanted to tell what actually happened. You know, there's several versions or, or uh, stories with holes in them um, about the events. And then there's a lot of things that have never been told. And so it was giving me the opportunity to tell that. And, um, you know, I, I don't mind if someone wants to watch a movie about it, but I want to make sure they understand the facts. I want them to, to know what what happened. Because I know I've heard, you know, sometimes Hollywood, when they take a, a book and they turn it into a movie, they twist it and yeah. do it the way they want it. So. Um, it's important to me that the real story, that it's known. Yeah. So, Pepper, where has ever happened to Bob's wife? Well, his ex-wife. Uh, we oh, don't yeah, that's right. Ex-wife. Yeah, the ex. Yeah, yeah. We <laughs> Make sure you put an X Let's in put that X in there, right? <laughs> <laughs> He's branded. <laughs> <laughs> The second one, we really, his, his second ex-wife, we really, uh, really liked her. But this third one is, uh, yeah, she's, she's nothing at all what, what any of us, I guess, expected. Um, so what happened to her? Well, let's see. She, uh, and I, I explain a little bit in the, I go into detail a little bit in the book about it. But she turned herself in, in uh, Denton County, that's in Texas. And um, she was charged with some of the crimes that they, that uh, were committed and then she bonded out. And I guess in the process while all that was happening, Bob was on the run and they finally captured him and then they arrested him. They sent him to Grayson County. And while all that was going on, then he escaped Grayson County with four other inmates in there. So her stuff kind of, I don't want to say it went away, but uh, he became the headline. And so I think things kind of centered mostly around him. He didn't have any business escaping jail. But uh, I think because of his crimes, after the fact and everything that was committed, I think everything kind of went in the direction of him and her stuff kind of, you know, fizzled in the background. She eventually was able to, uh, she ended up in Louisiana and um, she was able, her attorney was able to kind of get her out of, they, they were able to, to get her out of a few things. Um, and she just kind of resumed her life. In McKinney, uh, she's working for a worldwide adoption agency, which I expose in the book. Um, she had charges, federal and state charges, because you know she had written. Uh, she um, got loans on the cattle that she and Bob had got, and um, that's that's federal at the bank on the you know bank level it's federal so she had all these crimes that she committed and now here she is working for a worldwide adoption agency overseeing their finances and just doing all these things that somebody who has a uh, criminal history really shouldn't be doing but wow I don't know. I don't know. You know, she just managed to, uh, she's not the only one. She's not the only one. There are others um, who managed to get away with their crimes. And they're still committing them today. Yeah. Wow. So yeah. is she working with children or she's working with the agency? Well, she was working with children from my understanding. Now, I don't know if she's still working with the agency. I think since my book came out, she may be working with animals. Wow. Yeah, she posted online she was wanting to uh, pet sit for people's dogs and cats. So. <laughs> wow. I don't know. I don't know. You know. <laughs> I know. Uh, yeah. 
So Pepper, we have a, a couple questions here for you. Okay. Uh, number one question is, how did you get the name Pepper Ann? You know what? It is a pen name. And uh, I came up with it. I, well, I'm sure everybody knows the cartoon Pepper Ann. Everyone remembers that. Um, between that and Christmas is my favorite time of the year. So I always think Pepper Ann, Peppermint, and it just kind of, something, it just kind of came to me. <laughs> I thought, why don't we just do Pepper Ann? And it just, you know, it was one of those things. But yes, it, it is a pen name. It is a pen name. <laughs> the next question we have for you, Pepper, is when did you start writing crime stories? Or is this the first crime story you've written? Well, this is actually the first crime story I've written. I always wanted to write, but I didn't have a story. I always thought that I would write comedy. And then once I learned the story about this, then about 14 years ago, I took it on. And uh, it took me 12 years to write it. You know, if you had asked me 14, 15 years ago, would I ever consider writing crime? I would have said no, because I don't like graphic stuff. Um, I always, you know, I liked watching the crime shows. Um, but I can only listen, listen and watch so much of them because it feels like to me sometimes a lot of that can bring you down. I like to hear inspiring stories. So, um, yeah. Well, let, well let's, let's change that around because we talked about the crime stories and before we went live, we talked about anthologies because you've written in a couple of anthologies. So do you want to share a little bit about that? Oh, my goodness. So let me just say my PA, Laura, uh, she actually is the one. Their uh, anthology is put on through her. Uh, indie Advocate. Oh, my goodness. I should know this. <laughs> um, it, and, and they're put on through her. So the first one, uh, well, there's several of them. One is Cracked. And uh, it, it it's a story remember my story that I wrote in it. She's going to kill me. She's going to watch this and go, you can't, you can't remember that. Um, <laughs> we yeah. can just go bleep, 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 bleep. <laughs> <laughs> I keep telling her I want her to come on one of these podcasts with me. She, <laughs> listen, the lady is smart as a whip. She could tell you, but um, yeah, but she, um, she is amazing. So she puts these, uh, she, she does these anthologies and she's the one that oversees them. And she, you know, puts out for authors who are interested in, in writing and entering their, their short stories. And, uh, of course, you know, we, we submit our work, um, once they've been edited and then, uh, and, and, and they're great. So all of the anthologies that, um, my, my short stories are included in, uh, are under my Goodreads or my BookBub account. And you can see, you can see them, but uh, Cracked, uh, there's another one. It's um, Echoes. I call it Echoes. I know there's more. There's more to it, but um, Echoes. That one will be out uh, in October. I think it's okay. October first. But yeah. So and that's a the scary one. It's got ghosts and everything in it. But um, and then there's uh, I don't know it, how she's gonna feel about this, but I'm gonna say it. I hope she doesn't get mad. But um, I asked her if she would co-author a story with me and she said oh, I think so so we're 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 trying to get the story put together so if if it all goes well and the story turns out well uh Rose of Disgrace is the one that will be out in December I think December 1st and she so had uh, a couple of books coming out this year well I, a couple of stories in some anthologies yeah and, and again the books are actually uh they're, they're set up through Laura's business so uh yeah it's uh it's exciting i'm i'm just i'm so um i'm so honored to be included in in the book because there are a lot of amazing authors um who submit their work into it and it's also a great way to learn uh new authors and find you know new people that you like you like so yeah well that's what i enjoy about writing in anthologies right is you get to meet different people and different stories and connect and 
you know, sometimes people have summits and get togethers and then you get to meet all these different authors and you just never know, you might make yourself a buddy, you, you know, you might yeah. find the love of your life. You just never know when you're writing these anthologies, right? <laughs> <laughs> and not only that, you're learning, you're learning from other people too. You know, there's so many creative people out there, you know, we don't even know about. And uh, yeah, like you said, you never know who you're going to could run into the love of your life. I mean, it could right? happen. I mean, you never know. Right? Wouldn't that be a good story to tell? <laughs> How did you find each other? We wrote a chapter. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I did. I just did. Uh, was it? Oh, she's gonna. She's gonna. Um, yeah. I. I. Yeah. I. I should. I should have this. Uh, I should make this. Um maybe cracked is the one that it's about but what i did was uh in one of the stories and i think it's the one that's coming out um and i believe it's cracked don't quote me on that um what what we did was we got to take a fairy tale and we got to that's what it is and we got to crack it yes and so and what i did was i wrote a spin off of the three little pigs and <clears throat> I called mine three petite pigs and a wolf. And let me just tell you, it is funny. It's hilarious because you've got the pigs, their country, uh, they get in a bar fight, they play in a band, and then you find out a little bit about their <laughs> you find out a little bit about their family history. And then they share in the story about being related to Miss Piggy and what their uncle thought about her bringing an amphibian home which was kermit the frog so well there you go you got your you got your uh, country western family right there <laughs> <laughs> comedy that's right that's right yeah that is crack that's that story is in the crack anthology but yeah <laughs> well, i, I kind of like that like you, you took it and twisted it into a, a good uh, you know humor book like a humor story and you know, but you gave but, some family history as well because three little piggies and Miss Piggy and Kermit, you know, how everybody got together, like how the outsider, the bad boy came into the family. Like, <laughs> <laughs> well, and you know what else I love? So, I, I'm a facts person, I love facts, right? And I also put Porky Pig in the story as well. And I put because there was some, uh, there was some friction between him and Daffy Duck. I don't know if you knew this back when they were in Looney. Was it Looney Tunes? Yeah, I think it was. Was it Looney? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I should know this. Just or it. Bugs Bunny. Was it Bugs Bunny? Do I think? Yeah, he was. That's Bugs all. Bunny in the Looney Tunes. I think it was. But yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, anyway, so uh, I I write a little bit about that. But what I love is I got to do a little research and I got to learn about how these uh characters were created and once i did i thought hey i'm gonna tie them all together and so and i did uh and his wife petunia pig do you remember her porky and petunia pig yeah they had daughters. Now, we're, now we're going back along and we're gonna no. give our ages away <laughs> I, know, I know i know but this this story is funny it's hilarious i had friends and family read it they said oh my god <laughs> that's amazing but, but i got to dig the facts so yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, I think I think it's cool when we add facts, right? Because then it, it brings yeah. a stronger punch to the story as well, because there is facts there. I mean, I know it's a story about three little pigs, but it made it kind of realistic, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and who doesn't like the three little pigs, right? <laughs> I had one of the pigs playing a, fia, a fiddle in the band, and he got mad and cracked the cracked the. Uh, fiddle over somebody somebody's head it just is funny got it a good old funny. country country brawl there yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> that's in cracked that's in the cracked anthology make sure you know and, and read the other authors too because there's a lot of great ones in the mix yeah <laughs> well that's the thing right when there's an anthology if somebody doesn't resonate with your but another story that's what i like about anthologies yeah. uh, you know because sometimes it's not our story that uh are common there we go we're back <clears throat> good old technology wants to play with miss liz they want to put me in a wormhole again oh i know i know my so, i want to talk about 
<laughs> I want to talk about the Penny Pearl crime fiction mysteries that are coming. Is that started yet? Well, that's actually the one I was talking about. So that's the one okay. that my editor and I are working on. Yeah. Um, so I've got that one going and I'm going to throw out another one. <laughs> so uh, Penny Pearl, we're working on the first book and we've got it. Okay. It's, it's drafted and ready, but we're going back and forth my editor and I are, and I want to make sure that it, that it reads the way that it's supposed to. I don't want it to sound outlandish. You know, I want it, I want everything to be just so. Um, from the um, anthologies, each one of the stories so far that I've done, um, I'm putting those into another series that I'm doing. And I have not mentioned this yet. So this is the first time and it's going to be a spinoff of Penny Pearl. But I'm wanting to do it as the uh, the traveling Tootsies. And that's going to be older family members of Penny Pearl. Now I'm doing these and they and those books will come out about the same time, you know, within maybe a month of each other. While I'm doing those, I'm also collecting information for my next, I have two true crime stories that I'm gathering information on. And it takes a while, you know, you have to get FOIA records and, and so that, that stuff takes time. So it does take time. Right. And, and a lot of writers out there, you know, like some, some might write a book in two weeks or uh, in two days, but if you really want a good story, it does take time to build it up and get it into the way that it can make a good sale right and make a good pitch for a movie and stuff like that as well so and and i you know and laura kept saying you need to maybe try some fiction try some crime fiction so that's where the idea of the uh of the crime series uh crime fiction series came in at and i thought well it's going to take some time to get all this information for the next true crime story so while I'm waiting I might as well take advantage of the time and so that's that's kind of what happened yeah so we have a question here for you Pepper what is your favorite crime book that you've read that you haven't written uh, I think it's called blood will tell do you all remember and I'm not going to have the exact date, but it was back in the 70s or 80s. A man named Colin Davis uh, was in the Dallas Fort Worth area. He was a was he a millionaire or billionaire? I can't remember. But anyways, he um, he was able to he had uh, he tried to murder his ex wife. There was a movie about it, and. Oh. Uh, yeah. <laughs> he, is it he, called the same as the book? It's it's called Blood Will Tell. I don't remember the name of the of the movie. It may be, but it's it's based off of it's based off of the uh, the book. Now it may either be that one or another one, but there are several books written on the on the topic. And those who, if you just type in uh, Colin Davis, they will you'll be able to to learn more about the story and, and get the facts. But what interested me the most was um, he had hired someone and, and he was never, um, he was charged, but the charges somehow they kind of fizzled away. And he, what he did was he paid, a, he paid a lot of money to make them go away or he was charged with something or so I think maybe he was acquitted. And I'm sorry, I don't know, but I should. And I apologize for not having the story straight. But I will say this, um, so he, he had paid, maybe I shouldn't say he, he paid, but a lot of people assumed that he did. There was a lot of evidence um, where somebody was went in and had killed his ex-wife's uh, daughter and his ex-wife's boyfriend at the time. And uh, so there were two deaths, yeah. And uh, it was huge. It was huge. And uh, I believe I believe Colin is in his 80s or maybe in his 90s today. And I think he's still in the Dallas Fort Worth area, possibly. So he's still alive. But he he was uh, he's the first one that uh, was charged with a crime such as that and was able to get away with it. I'll have to check it out. 
I, I, I'm I'm a big junkie on crime shows and like real crime. I like real life stories because I know that it actually happened to somebody, right? Um, yeah. When it when it's man when it's man made, like I'm just like uh, it's it doesn't grab my interest. Yeah. But I always like to have like the you know like at the end of a movie where they say like if the person survived or if they got sentencing or they did this many years. I always like to see that, right? Because then you know that the the story has continued on. Uh, who was the uh, who was the lady? And I know you know who she is. And I'm sorry, I'm drawing a blank. Uh, did you ever watch Melrose Place? Yes. You know the blonde. The oh, oh, uh, yeah. oh yeah 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 yeah. Oh, uh, she was married to a rock star, I think. Am I thinking that? No, I'm thinking Melrose Place. Okay, Melrose she's Place came old. out like when nine oh two one oh came out, right? Yeah. Yes. Uh huh. Yeah. Oh my okay. God! Everybody's gonna listen. My mind. Is <laughs> all over well, for all the listeners out there, maybe they know who this blonde girl was on Melrose Place. Put it in the comment section because uh, I'm I'm drawing a blank, but I know who you're talking about because nine oh two one oh. Now I'm thinking of all the shows that I used to watch back then. I, Here we are again. We're giving our ages away, girl and guys. So. I know. I I apologize because I should be able to give more information about Colin Davis. I am sorry. I'm only working on a few hours of sleep. I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I know. But this, uh, oh my goodness, I cannot remember her name. And she, uh, well, I guess she was best friends with Denise Richards. Was it Tori Spelling? No, not Tori Spelling. The other, not, not Tori Spelling's friend, but this is the, uh, well, no, she wasn't on 90210. She was on uh, she was on Melrose Place. Okay, Melrose Place. I know you know who she is. But anyway, <laughs> she was in the movie. She was in the movie about Colin Davis. She was she played the wife, the ex-wife, I guess. Oh, I cannot remember her name. It's not the blonde chick that was on Dallas, was it? No. Or Dynasty. No. Yes, I think was she on she was on she was also on a, in a cop in a uh, detective show. T.J. Hooker. Oh, I know, goodness. I know. This is showing our age. I, I, you know, you, you know, we're gonna get off of this call. We're gonna get off of this interview, and I'm gonna be like, ding, 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 ding. I know who it is. I can't think I'm of it. Google, like I'm gonna Google this. Hold on, just a minute. I'm sorry. <laughs> I apologize. Just give me. I apologize. <laughs> And this is how tea time works, guys. We, we, if you guys can <laughs> tell us the answer, put it in the comment section because we're we're trying to figure out the blonde chick from Melrose. Heather Place. Locklear. It's Heather. Oh Locklear. my goodness! Yes. 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 She was on. Wasn't she on uh, part of Chips as well? The motorcycle. I was thinking it was T.J. Hooker. Was it Chips? It might have been. I should I should Google Colin Davis so I can get that story straight and tell you. <laughs> <laughs> Here we are going down memory lane, right? Well, there were some crimes back then too, wasn't there? On those, so yeah. on some of those shows. You uh, know what? And there, there are a lot of them that were never solved. Yeah, you know what's great. Amazing. Um, in today with today's technology, there's something to be said for it. There, um, there are a lot of crimes today compared to, we'll just say, twenty or thirty years ago. It's easier for them to solve a case now than it was back yeah. then because there's so much so yeah yeah i love watching the cold cases because when they yeah. pull out those cold cases and with the technology they have today boom they're they're solving them within like a couple of months and some of those cold cases are like 20 30 years old like yeah yeah that's true and and some of those people the family members that of the people who were murdered um have have since passed on you know and they spent most of their lives trying to solve the cases and to figure yeah. out who, who did it and never, you know, never, never solved. Yeah. It's just now, it, Pepper, I'm telling you, now you got me wanting to go down memory lane with all these shows. I'm going to be Googling <laughs> them and seeing if I can stream them on my TV. <laughs> <laughs> I watch Mama's Family and Designing Women every once in a while when I do, I need a break, and I know how old they are. I mean, the, the shows, you know. I know. I... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, it just shows that we're not young anymore, right? <laughs> shows we have good taste. 
Yeah. You know, <laughs> we, we got good taste and good shows. <laughs> so Pepper, I want to get into your tea. And I'm I'm gonna get you to say the tea because I can't say because my tongue is all twisted. It's gonna go twist it all again. <laughs> Give me the tea that you gave me, and then we're gonna talk about why you gave me those words. Okay. So it's tenaciously exposing yeah. atrocities. <laughs> <That's it. laughs> you know, I can't remember what my last one was, but this one I was I was on it. I was like, hey. So basically the reason I picked that tea is because it shows that I'm I'm passionately exposing uh, wrongdoing. And it feels like I'm doing it more now than I did before. Because before I was a little uncertain. I mean, I knew what I wanted to do, but with the individuals who have been reaching out to me, I'm determined. I'm like, nope, we're going to get this out there even more. So that's, that's why that's my tea today. Yeah. So the last word, atrocities. atrocities. For anybody that doesn't, for anybody that doesn't know what that word is, do you want to share a little bit about that? Well, atrocities. Um, okay, we're gonna have people come at us. Please remember, <laughs> <laughs> we're used to people coming at us. <laughs> I'm gonna be a first. Right? <laughs> when I think of atrocities, I think of wrongdoings. I think of maybe catastrophes. I think of uh, things that are uh, just a, a big mess, just a big, you know, crazy cluster mess of, of things that need to be, uh, need to be fixed. Yeah. Problems. Really yeah. bad problems, yeah. <laughs> big big problems. The big yeah. bad boy. What what is it? The Wild Wild West, the song. <laughs> yeah, there you go. That should be my theme song. <laughs> Great, the Wild Wild West. That, that would be a good song for your book. The oh, Wild I'm Wild West. Kidding. I know. There's so many books. Uh, I mean, so many songs. Yeah, there's yeah. The Wild Wild West would be perfect for it. <laughs> Absolutely. So, Pepper, <laughs> you gave me the word vibrant to describe yourself as a person. Why mm -hmm. that word? Vibrant? Well, yeah. I like to think that with everything going on, I, I'm trying to, to be as positive and upbeat as much as I can. I'm trying to uh, keep things going in a, in a good even kill. Um, I like to try to shine as bright as I can. I think we all have that. I think that should describe all of us. I think we all have a gift that uh, would make us vibrant, would make us stand out. Because um, we do. Each of us, each of us have something, and there it's different. It's 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 different about us. But we all can shine in our own way. And to me, Absolutely. that's what the vibrant. That's that's where that comes in. Um, so do you remember the favorite color you gave me? I don't. Was it blue, teal? Teal. Was it really teal? Yeah. Oh, well, that's that. Well, okay. Well, that, that is my favorite color. So <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, well, I asked you, you're like, <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what? Teal's in the blue family. <laughs> yeah. 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 No, I, uh, so my house is uh, a lot. I have a lot of teal in my home. Maybe I need to, well, I mean, I don't know if that ever goes on a style, but I love it. It's so pretty and it's vibrant. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. There's a vibrant and there's a teal. <laughs> you know, it's because sometimes when my guests return, sometimes they change their colors and then they're like, wow. What color did I give you the first time? What color did I give you the second time? You know, and sometimes the guests come back three, four times. Like I, I, I have a guest that's come back six times and you know, so he, he's almost giving me every single color of the rainbow, I think. <laughs> but you know what? I think it's our mood. I think it's our mood. Yeah. Right? Cause I mean, if you think about it, if someone goes for, you know, the darker colors, they might be going through something uh, kind of dramatic in their lives, you know, um, or, or if they go with the lighter colors, things might be easy and sunshiny for them, you know? Yeah. Makes sense. Right? And colors tell us a lot, too, about people. And, yeah. and like you said, like the mood, right? Like depending on what they are, depending on what they're wearing, too, sometimes, right? If they're always in black, you're like, hmm, what, what they had and what kind of secrets they got. <laughs> 
They want to do more than just be, than, than just come across as a slim individual. Not that anybody needs to, but you know, there's some yeah. drama there. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then white, white is like, hmm, white. When I see someone in white, it makes me really question because white is really out there, right? Uh huh. Uh huh. So. Yeah. Do they like? Do they want to be so out there that they don't get seen? Because sometimes you're you're so bright that you don't get seen, right? No, well, that's true. That's true. Yeah. Or white is is different. Maybe they want to stand out um, because you don't. You know, I I've noticed on 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 television and and even looking through you know online, um, the colors. You know, you see a lot of people, a lot of ladies i haven't noticed men but more ladies do this they wear a real pretty like a white or cream color suit with a real pretty color underneath it a bold one like a blue yeah. or a red and i'm thinking well do they want to stand out or are they trying to stay hidden you know it's beautiful the contrast is beautiful yeah. so i don't know i don't know it could go well, either well, way it, well pepper it's almost like a crime scene right yeah. Like some stuff stands out and some stuff is hidden because it's so bright. It's right in our face, but we're missing it because yeah. we're so focused on getting the answer. But the answer is right in front of us sometimes. That's true. You're so right. Yeah. Yeah. You're absolutely right. And a lot of times we don't figure it out until we've already left the scene of the crime. <laughs> and then we're like, you know, where, where was that carpet put again? You know, because sometimes people move stuff. Well, that's right. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Yeah, I never thought about that, but you're so right. It is kind of so, like a, a crime scene of some sort. Yeah, right. We're all we're all criminals in a, in our own in our own special way. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. Every once in a while, I'll eat grapes in a grocery store, so I guess that makes me a thief. I but I don't steal. <laughs> <laughs> but I do grab the occasional. I'll I'll look if I'm in the store and I'll grab. You know, you want to make sure you're getting the sweetest of them, right? I shouldn't do that. I shouldn't do that. <laughs> They're going to be on the lookout for Pepper Ann with the grapes. <laughs> it's not like I'm peeling a banana. You know, taste it and put it back. <laughs> I Eat the banana off. peel, pull, pull up the banana peel, put it back. <laughs> or an apple, take a bite and put it down. No, I'm not encouraging. Please don't do that, people. <laughs> it's disgusting. <laughs> For those of us well, you're thinking like a perfect crime at the grocery store. <laughs> who ate the apple? <laughs> and, you know, they've got cameras all over the place, you know. They can see you. You know, <laughs> not that we're encouraging anybody to go out and start crying, <laughs> eating fruits and vegetables in the grocery store. But you know what? Sometimes you do get hungry when you're doing your groceries, right? And a little nibble doesn't hurt. I know my granddaughter, we she usually gets a bag of grapes and we just uh, go and measure them first, pay for them, and then she can eat them while we're shopping. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, they have the little, uh, well, depending on where you're at, they have the scales where you can pop them on there, you weigh them. Yeah you know, all that. And then you can take the tag. And, and I've done that. I've done that plenty of times. But the last time I went to the grocery store with my mom, I grabbed, I was trying to decide between the green, the purple, the red, all these different grapes. <laughs> and I was looking around me to see if anybody was, you know, around. <laughs> She's like checking it out. <laughs> and I grabbed this, I grabbed one of each color, you know, and I took a bite and I looked up and my mom said, what are you doing? <laughs> but well, like, you're testing to see which one was the better one to buy. I said, do you want a grape? She said, no, but I like cherries. So she went over to the cherries. I was like, mom, <laughs> you need to stop this. <laughs> I know. Well, that, and, and, and that could be your next, uh, you know, mini stories. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> mini, <always. laughs> I hope I mini humor crime stories. I hope I haven't disappointed anyone. I apologize if I did. <laughs> <laughs> so, Pepper, is there anything that I haven't mentioned that has happened since we've last seen each other? Not that I can think of, other than, um, like I said, the individuals have been reaching out to me and, um, you know, just uh, <laughs> wanting to speak to me um, and showing up at events. And uh, I think it's more just surprising. It's shocking. <laughs> um, yeah. But yeah, that's, 
that's really all um, other than I'm, I'm just continuing to move forward. You know, the books out there and, uh, oh, I, I will say this. Yes. Um, I ended up having to do uh, a second edition of uh, the Notorious Texas Swindler uh, because the first one uh, wasn't allowed into the prison system because oh. it was so detailed. Yes. I was so detailed about the jail escape, the Grayson County. <laughs> so oh, you went too to, deep for them. I go, like, yes, yes, yes. And that's okay. <laughs> I, you know what? I took it out because I am not going to provide information for people. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, so we're in the process of trying to get the second edition approved. So we, we should know within a week or two if it is. So that's really the only other thing that, uh, that I haven't mentioned that. Uh, I, I was I was kind of concerned a little bit because um, the the notorious Texas swindler is on a lot of websites, and one of the reasons it was important for me to try to get it corrected or or to put another edition out there is because there are several websites that uh, are specialized for family members who have loved ones who are incarcerated, and that book is up there. For sale and they don't offer refunds if you buy a book and it's rejected once it gets to the penal institution these people these families are out of money they can't you know they, they they can't get their money back so it's important to me that for all the websites that it's on that it be available for those people and so that was one of the reasons why i wanted to do that i wanted to make sure that if these uh, if these bookstores, these websites were going to have it available for people who were incarcerated, I wanted them to be able to have the right copy for their loved ones. You know. So, and Pepper, do you have you have a shop on your website, correct? I do. Yes, I sure do. And uh, you can actually, um, so you you can you can buy the first edition anywhere. The second edition is just now coming out. As I said, there we're, we're trying to get it, trying to make sure it's it's approved, and I believe it, it will be. Um, and then once it is, any books that I have on my website, they, they're they signed. So if you want an autographed copy from me, then you would go to, come to my website. Um, otherwise, you can you can get the book anywhere. And and it's in all these libraries as well. So Oh, that's yeah. cool. That, that's yeah. good that it's in the library. You know, it's important to get our books in libraries as well. I agree. Yeah. Yeah. And then it's uh, it's in all forms, paperback, hardback, ebook. So, yeah. So, Pepper, I found Mingle with Pepper. What's that about? Mingle with Pepper. So, if you scroll down, <laughs> you <laughs> will see all of the interviews I've done on the various podcasts. And, in fact, our first one is on there. You awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, you can learn a little more about, and then also an interview that I did with uh, a website called allauthor.com. And, uh, it was, um, it was, it was, a an interview that I did, but it wasn't a, uh, it's not verbal. It was a written one. So, yeah. Oh, that's so cool. Yeah. I, 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 I did my homework. Are you still giving, uh, doing the bookmarks? Yes, yes, yes. Uh, those are actually on, uh, I believe you can get those through my newsletter. And you can actually sign up um, through my newsletter, uh, for my newsletter on the first page, on the home page. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. You can get that there. Mingle with Pepper is all of my favorite podcasts. They're all on there. <laughs> so you'll get to see number one and number two of Miss Liz with Pepper and you sure will. Yes, yes. And if you're ever wondering who I follow and who I listen to, right there, mingle with Pepper. Those y'all are the only ones that I, you know, I'm so appreciative that you all give me the time of day to tell my story. So So Pepper, yeah. if anybody wanted to have you on their podcast or on their show, how could they reach you? You can go on to my contact page, which is on the uh, on the website, and send me an email. And I'll now for I'll all the audio listeners out there, do you want to read out your website and spell it out? Yes. Yeah. So it's pepperannauthor.com. Pepper is in the seasoning, 
T E P P E R. Anne is A N N E. And then author, A U T H O R dot com. And uh, you know what? I'm excited because. When I typed in the title, The Notorious Sex with Swindler, you know, I use the Google search engine. I take up like four or five pages on Google and my website's up there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just excited. I think that's wonderful, you know? Yeah. Well, it's been a real pleasure having you back, Pepper, and sitting and, and getting to bring back some memories of the good old TV shows and crimes and all that good stuff, right? So for anybody that would like to know more about Tea Time, check out Miss Liz's website at www.misslizesteatime.com, no S on Tea Time. And if you'd like to see Miss Liz in video, you can go over to Miss Liz's YouTube channel, check out Miss Liz's Tea Times. Um, and if you'd like to know who is coming for September, stay tuned because that press release is going out September 24th and there is some new countries that will be joining Miss Liz. So we will be adding those countries to all of the existing com uh, 67 countries that we've already had on Tea Time. We will be back Thursday at 3 p.m. and 7 p.m. We will have Audrey Gale coming in with The Human Trial. She'll be talking about her book. And then we have Marie Powell coming in, and she'll be talking about her books and children's books and all that good stuff. So until then, I will wish you all a good night and keep serving your tea. We're not serving the beverage. We're serving real-life stories and words on Tea Time with Miss Liz. So until then, I'll see you on Thursday, same time, same place, and we'll do it all over again. Mm -hmm.